Hi guys, in this video we will be learning about the process of urbanisation and the causes of urban growth, finishing off with an exam style question. First of all we're going to learn a bit about a background to urbanisation and urbanisation can be defined as the process by which an increasing proportion of a country's population lives in towns and cities. So it's really crucial that we recognise that it's the proportion of people living in towns and cities out of a particular country's population. So that is urbanisation. And the trends that we have seen since 1945 is that the urban population globally has grown rapidly from around 746 million people in 1950 to 3.9 billion people in 2014. Now, the most urbanised regions of the world are typically going to be our most developed regions, which include North America having 82% of their population living in urban areas in 2014. Also, Latin America and the Caribbean having 80%, so just below North America. And then in Europe, we have 73% of populations living in urban areas. However, in contrast, we have our least developed regions as our least urbanised regions as well, with Africa only having 40% of their population living in urban areas, Asia just more than that at 48%, and then India, China and Nigeria, who are incorporated in these two groups between Africa and Asia, who still currently have very low urban populations. These have the fastest growing urban areas in the world at the moment. So there are up and coming urbanizers essentially. And India, China and Nigeria together are expected to account for 37% of the projected growth of the world's urban population between 2014 and 2050. Some other facts include that the total world urban population is expected to surpass 6 billion by 2045 and much of the expected growth will come from our lower income countries in Africa and Asia and the fastest growing urban areas will be our medium sized cities and cities with less than 1 million inhabitants. But some um, reports also suggest that many areas projected to be urban in 2040 have actually not been built yet. So there's going to be a vast amount of urban growth coming in the future, especially in our lower income countries. And it's predicted that in India alone, that 70% of cities have yet to be built. However, moving away from our growing areas, some cities now in the developed world are experiencing population decline. And this is because economic contraction has led to population losses in many American cities, such as Buffalo, and a most common example is in Detroit in northern United States, where between 2000 and 2014, they experienced a huge population loss due to economic contraction. And other examples in the United States of population decline relate to natural disasters such as Hurricane Katrina which occurred in 2005 and New Orleans population which is where the hurricane took place. Their population has also been in decline since the natural disaster occurred. So one other striking feature of the last 30 years has been the rapid development of megacities. Now, megacities are urban areas with more than 10 million people in their population. So that is what a megacity is. And in 1990, we only had 10 megacities. By 2014, we had 28 megacities. And by 2025, it's predicted there will be 37 megacities across the world who all have more than 10 million people living within them. And... These 37 megacities will hold around 13% of the world's global population. So at the moment, when this book was written in 2015, Asia had the largest city as Tokyo, which was the biggest city in the world population-wise, with over 38 million inhabitants in 2015. 
and this is closely followed by cities such as Delhi, Mumbai and Shanghai. And all of these cities have in common that these are no longer mega cities as we saw here. These are now called meta cities and meta cities are cities with more than 20 million inhabitants. So one other interesting fact which is in China that the Chinese authorities and government have planned to merge nine of their cities in the Pearl River Delta to create an urban area which is 26 times larger than Greater London. So China is going to be on the forefront of building these huge mega cities and meta cities in the future, probably overtaking Tokyo at some point. Now we're going to have a look at the causes of urban growth. And now the process of urbanization plays a really important role in human affairs. And it's historically been linked to other important social and economic transformations, which have brought about greater geographic mobility, lower fertility and also longer life expectancy as well. So cities also hold a huge role and play an important role in poverty reduction. And this is because they hold most of the national economic activity. They also are home to government institutions, businesses and transportation networks. And they also have high levels of education, better healthcare and easier access to social services as well. So in 2015, for example, Sao Paulo, which is Brazil's economic and financial capital, accounted for 10% of the population, but 25% of the national gross domestic product. Likewise, in Nairobi, Kenya, which is their largest city, they had 8.4% of the country's population, but accounted for almost 20% of the country's GDP. So just to define urban growth, urban growth is slightly different to urbanisation. As we learnt earlier on, urbanisation is an increase in proportion of the number of people living in urban areas compared to the rest of the country, Whereas urban growth is slightly different in that it relates to an increase in the number of urban dwellers. So urbanisation is the proportion or the percentage, whilst urban growth is simply a growth in numbers of people living in cities. And it's uh, very important that we can distinguish between the two. Moving on now, we're going to look at some factors of natural population growth, which are causing urban growth. So urban areas tend to have very young age profiles generally. And across the world, it's traditionally been young adults between about 15 to 40 years old. And they've migrated into cities, lured by prospects such as higher paid jobs, better employment opportunities and greater social and cultural diversity and so on. So many pull factors which have pulled young migrants into cities. And between 2001 and 2011, the population of large city centres in England and Wales more than doubled, with the number of residents aged 22 to 29 nearly tripling to make up almost half of the total population. So as we can see, urban areas have typically a very young age profile. And this means um, because they have a very young age profile and they're mostly between 15 and age 40, They also have very high fertility rates because they are in their most fertile years. These are the years during which people have children. And so the rates of natural increase are much higher in cities than in surrounding rural areas. So just an example, in London, there's an area stretching from Clapham, which is south of the river, westwards to Fulham, which is north of the river. And this has been called Nappy Valley because of just the proportion of the young families living there that everyone seems to be having children. And this is leading to urban growth. Traditionally, professional couples with young children would have lived outside the city in suburbs, for example, where they could have raised their children in a much quieter area but these well currently there's lots of rising costs and commuting has become increasingly expensive as well so now many more people are encouraged to raise their families within the city and this is leading to urban growth.
So now we're going to look at urban and rural migration, looking at some of the push and pull factors relating to them. So the reasons for rural urban migration is often divided into push and pull factors. Push factors are those factors which cause people to move away from rural areas, where pull factors are the factors which are attracting them to urban areas. So pull factors are attracting, whilst push factors are kind of pushing away. So now we're going to go through some of these push and pull factors. Typically in low income countries, push factors tend to be more important than the pull factors. We're going to have a look at them now. So push factors are largely related to poverty. And these are caused by things like population growth, which means that the same area of land in maybe a rural area has to support increasing numbers of people. And this causes issues such as over farming, soil erosion and low yields. This can also lead to agricultural problems, including desertification because of low rainfall, for example, and so on. And also this could be linked to climate change as well. Other factors which are typical for low income countries include high levels of local diseases and inadequate medical provision. Agriculture is also increasingly being organised globally, so land which was previously used to grow food for local people is now used to produce cash crops which are sold abroad in higher income countries and many traditional rural countries have been driven off their own land by TNCs. Also, natural disasters such as floods, storms and earthquakes are cause people to flee rural areas and they don't return. And also wars and civil conflict cause people to flee their land as well. Then some of the pull factors which are attracting people to cities include better employment opportunities and better pay, for example, because there'll be more employment in factories and service industries which are better paid work than in rural areas. And there's also an increasingly high demand for unskilled labour in cities. Also, earning money from the informal sector, for example, selling goods on the streets, providing transport such as taxis or even prostitution um, is an opportunity in cities. There's also better quality social provisions from basic needs such as education, healthcare, even entertainment and tourism as well. And most of all, there is perceived better quality of life in the city. This may not actually be true, but this is fed to rural people in images from the media, which kind of idolise the city as a place where there's a great quality of life and it's really attractive. And this often pulls people towards moving to cities. Finally, we're going to answer an exam style question, which asks us to summarise the factors which cause urban growth. So first of all, I'm going to start off with a definition of urbanisation because it's one of the reasons for urban growth. So urbanisation is the process by which there is an increase in the proportion of a country's population that lives in towns and cities. The two main causes of urbanisation are natural population growth and migration into urban areas from rural areas. Now I'm going to talk about the factors relating to natural population growth. So I've said natural population growth causes urban growth because urban areas tend to have a younger age profile as there are a high number of young people migrating to cities to seek employment, higher wages and better healthcare and education. These migrants are in their fertile years, so the rates of natural increase are higher in cities than in surrounding rural areas. Then finally, I'm going to look at the push and pull factors relating to urban and rural migration. As so I've said, the reasons for rural urban migration are often divided into push and pull factors, which push people away from rural areas and attract people towards urban areas. Examples of push factors in rural areas include famine, disease, civil conflict and natural disasters. And pull factors towards urban areas include better employment opportunities, better wages, better quality social provisions and a perceived better quality of life. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-level geography a walk in the park.